So friends, given the truly bizarre judicial behavior of Trump appointed Judge Aileen Cannon, I think a fair question at this point is, is Judge Cannon incompetent, compromised, or both? Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, it's becoming increasingly clear that a motion to recuse or remove Trump appointed Judge Aileen Cannon from presiding over the criminal case of the defendant to whom she owes her lifetime appointment as a federal judge, a motion to remove her from Donald Trump's classified documents, obstruction of justice, espionage case must be filed and litigated because she just issued another order, an order that is, as the USA Today headline appropriately relates, insane. Let's look at that new reporting from USA Today. Headline, judge in Trump classified documents case proposes insane jury instructions experts say. And that article begins, the judge presiding over charges against former President Donald Trump for allegedly hoarding classified documents after leaving the White House proposed on Monday jury instructions for the eventual trial that favor his, Donald Trump's, claim that he declassified the records. U.S. District Judge Aileen Cannon's proposal tips the scales so far in Trump's direction that legal experts say the prosecutor, Justice Department Special Counsel Jack Smith, might ask an appeals court to remove her from the case. Joyce White Vance, a former U.S. attorney, said the Presidential Records Act isn't a way around rules for handling classified documents because the records are still government property, not Trump's personal possessions. Quote, expect their response to be hard hitting, Vance said of prosecutors in a post on Substack. The bottom line is that the Presidential Records Act doesn't forgive Trump for violating criminal laws regarding handling of national secrets. Judge Cannon's order called for lawyers on both sides to engage with two possible instructions she proposed. In one, Cannon said jurors should, quote, make a factual finding as to whether the government had proven beyond a reasonable doubt the records are personal or presidential. In the other, Cannon proposed telling jurors, a president has sole authority under the Presidential Records Act, the PRA, to categorize records as personal or presidential during his or her presidency. Neither a court nor a jury is permitted to make or review such a categorization decision. Legal experts blasted the order as insane and nuts. This second scenario is legally insane and under it, Cannon could simply dismiss the charges, said Bradley Moss, a national security lawyer. Vance said both proposals from Cannon virtually direct the jury to find Trump not guilty. It turns out it's two pages of crazy stemming from the judge's apparent inability to tell Trump no when it comes to his argument that he turned the nation's secrets into his personal records by designating them as such under the Presidential Records Act, Vance said. So friends, I can tell you as a federal prosecutor for 30 years, these two proposed instructions are crazy, insane, nuts, all good ways to describe what it is Judge Cannon just proposed. And we're going to talk about exactly why that is. And I'm going to try to translate everything from legalese to English. Let's start with the 30,000 foot view of what is a jury instruction. 
So during a criminal trial, a jury and a judge have very different jobs. Jurors are the finders of fact. They listen to the testimony of the witnesses. They assess their credibility. They look at and consider everything that's been moved into evidence, you know, documents, photographs, diagrams, reports, physical pieces of evidence, you know, in a murder case, a, a gun or a knife or a brick or a bat or a ligature. And they decide factually what happened, what the evidence proves. The judge gives the jury instructions of law, what law applies to the case, such that once the jurors know what they believe the evidence has proved, what the facts are, they apply the law to those facts and they decide if the facts fulfill the elements of the crime beyond a reasonable doubt, such that they should return a guilty verdict, or if the evidence fails to prove beyond a reasonable doubt each element of the crime. But the judge instructs the jury on matters of law. Basically, they give the, the jurors a legal framework into which to plug the evidence, their findings of fact. Jury instructions, as Judge Cannon just proposed in this order, two jury instructions. Jury instructions are typically discussed and debated by the parties, the prosecutor and the defense attorney, sort of closer in time to the trial. We don't even have a trial date here. And ordinarily, friends, you can't even figure out precisely what legal instructions are appropriate until the case is underway and the evidence is coming in because the evidence as it's received during the course of the trial will dictate to a large degree what the appropriate legal instructions are that must be given to the jury. So you don't even finalize what jury instructions will be given until the very end of the case, ordinarily right before closing arguments. We don't even have a trial date or the prospect of a trial date. And Judge Cannon said, I want you, you prosecutors and defense attorneys to quote, engage, we're gonna talk about her order in a minute, engage with these two proposed jury instructions that I've just given you. Okay, now first we have to talk about the Presidential Records Act. I know, but please bear with me for a few minutes because I'm gonna do this in English, not legalese. Because we need to know what the Presidential Records Act, I'm gonna call it the PRA, um, provides for. What it really means, rather than what Donald Trump says it means, or what Judge Cannon thinks it means, as evidenced by these two proposed crazy, nuts, insane jury instructions. Here is, in just a few sentences, what the Presidential Records Act really is. The Presidential Records Act, the PRA, requires the president to separate personal documents from presidential records before leaving office. That's the law. The PRA makes clear that upon the conclusion of the president's term in office, NARA, the National Archives, assumes responsibility for the custody, control, preservation of, and access to the records of a president. That is the law. The PRA makes the legal status of presidential records clear and unambiguous, providing that the United States reserves and retains complete ownership, possession, and control of presidential records. Friends, that is the law. And importantly, the Presidential Records Act defines what constitutes presidential records and what are personal records. Personal records include diaries, journals, or other personal notes serving as the functional equivalent of a diary or journal. The president does not have discretion to categorize a presidential record as a personal record, and yes, friends, that is the law. In plain English, 
you know, easy to understand, unmistakable. That's the law. Now, let's turn to Judge Cannon's very short order directing the parties to engage in these two jury instructions that Judge Cannon made up out of whole cloth. In the case of United States of America versus Donald Trump, Waltine Nauda, and Carlos de Oliveira, defendants, this new order is titled, Order Requiring Preliminary Proposed Jury Instructions and Verdict Forms on Counts 1 through 32 only. Those are the espionage charges. Donald Trump is indicted on 32 counts of violating our nation's espionage laws. Let's look at the relevant part of this order. Judge Cannon directs that the parties must engage with the following competing scenarios and offer alternative draft text that assumes each scenario to be a correct formulation of the law to be issued to the jury while reserving counter arguments. The problem is she's asking the parties to assume that these scenarios are a correct formulation of the law. And friends, you don't have to be a lawyer. Based on what we just reviewed, what the Presidential Records Act provides for, you're going to see these are not correct formulations of the law. Here's the first proposed instruction. In a prosecution of a former president for allegedly retaining documents in violation of 18 U.S. Code Section 793E, that's the Espionage Act, it's the crime of willful retention of national defense information, a jury is permitted to examine a record retained by a former president in his or her personal possession at the end of his or her presidency and make a factual finding as to whether the government has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that it is personal or presidential using the definition set forth in the Presidential Records Act. No. That's not the law. That's not the Presidential Records Act as it is on the federal books. I just read it to you. A personal record is something like a diary or a journal. Donald Trump stole classified documents, national security secrets, national defense information like you heard him talking about on that audio recording made at his New Jersey golf club, Bedminster, where he was talking to people in the room who had no security clearances. After he left the presidency, he said, look at this. Look at this. Do you see this? This was prepared for me by the military. This talks about a contingency plan to um, militarily strike Iran. Look at this. Can you believe this? The jury has no business, friends. I use that as an example. The jury has no business deciding, well, let me look at the record and see if it's personal or presidential. No, that's not what the Presidential Records Act provides. So the jury has no business even being instructed this way because it is contrary to the law. Here is the second proposed instruction by Judge Cannon. A president has sole authority under the PRA to categorize records as personal or presidential during his or her presidency. That's wrong. Neither a court nor a jury is permitted to make or review such a categorization decision. Although there is no formal means in the PRA by which a president is to make that categorization, an outgoing president's decision to exclude what he or she considers to be personal records from presidential records transmitted to the National Archives and Records Administration constitutes a president's categorization of those records as personal under the PRA. Friends, this is not a legal instruction to a jury. This is a judge basically announcing that Donald Trump is not guilty because 
This is an unreviewable decision. So if he happened to telepathically think that everything I've taken, all of the national defense information, all of the classified documents, all of our nation's secrets, if he took it all, then he was entitled to take it all. And the jury has no authority to second guess him. That's why th this is insane. This is crazy. This is nuts. This is not a legal instruction. This is not instru an instruction of law. This is an instruction contrary to existing law, the Presidential Records Act. And it's virtually a judge announcing to the jury that you don't even get to weigh in because Donald Trump is not guilty based on what I'm telling you right here. I don't even know why she would be instructing the jury on this. She would just dismiss the case. You know, friends, I was half expecting to see a third proposed instruction where Judge Cannon would, you know, purport to instruct the jury. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this entire prosecution is a witch hunt. Because in substance, that's sort of what she's signaling in these first two jury instructions that are contrary to the law. Now, what can be done about this? Well, as I said at the beginning of this video, a motion to remove her from the case, a motion to recuse, has to be filed and litigated. And let the chips fall. If the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals says, no, everything she's done is fine, well, not everything she's done is fine, because remember that the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals has already reversed her twice earlier when the investigation into Trump's crimes was ongoing before he was indicted. Remember how she stepped in and interfered in the ongoing investigation after the FBI had secured a search warrant and seized the evidence of crime from Mar-a-Lago, the classified documents that Donald Trump was hoarding and refusing to uh, return after they'd been subpoenaed by a grand jury as part of a criminal investigation. Remember what Judge Cannon did? She swooped in appointed a special master and told the Department of Justice to stop investigating these documents and the potential crimes of Donald Trump. In the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, a three-judge panel, including, I believe, two Trump-appointed judges, reversed her and said, you abused your ju judicial discretion to the extreme benefit of Donald Trump. You interfered in an ongoing DOJ investigation. You can't do that. You are reversed. So we know that not everything she's done um, has been on the up and up, has been in accordance with the law. She's done enormous favors for Donald Trump by violating her judicial discretion, by doing something the law did not allow. And here she goes again. So a motion to recuse, a motion to remove her can and should be filed and litigated, and we will live with the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals decision on whether any of this can stand. But what Jack Smith shouldn't do, in my humble opinion, and in my experience as a former career prosecutor, is feed the monster. You can't feed the monster. When a judge is acting lawlessly, when a judge has shown herself to be either incompetent or biased in favor of the defendant or both, you don't feed the monster by just plowing forward. Yes, I know prosecutors are loath to antagonize judges by filing motions to kick them off a case, but could Judge Cannon be any more antagonistic to the cause of justice? Could she be any more antagonistic to the people's right to a fair trial? The way she continues to side with Donald Trump in ways that are previously, according to the appellate court, abuses of her judicial discretion, and here she goes again? You can't feed the monster. You've got to starve the monster. You've got to take the monster on using all legal avenues available. Motion to recuse or remove. Petition for a writ of mandamus to get the appellate court to tell her to do her job in a lawful way, not a lawless way. Because you don't want to look back at the end of this case with Donald Trump having had all of his charges dismissed by Judge Aileen Cannon in a way that was clearly biased and not 
in keeping with the applicable laws and say, should have filed a motion to recuse, should have done more. I shouldn't have just kept feeding the monster. Act now. Litigate the motion to remove her in the full light of day. Let the chips fall and we the people will live with the consequences, but you've got to take this on. You can't avoid this battle because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.